Enigma is a project that's been going on for years now. And the first I heard about Enigma was at a human brain mapping meeting years ago in San Francisco. And at that point, there were a group of us all sitting around thinking, you know, we're never going to make progress understanding how common variation influences, common genetic variation influences brain um, by having individual groups. And I was with a group of people and we were proposing a white paper to create something like Enigma. And then the next day, Paul Thompson comes to me and says, I've created this group. And I thought, that's fantastic. I don't have to do it. Um, and, so, uh, and so we became part of the same group. There's an entire disease aspect to Enigma, but then there's a development component and a genetics component. The world of, of genome-wide association models, particularly GWAS studies looking at large-scale samples with common variants, has been successful to the extent that it's helped us delineate genetic architecture, particularly uh, understanding the fact that there's significant polygenicity in many of the diseases that we're interested in. And it turns out also in many of the brain regions that, we, that we're uh, interested in. Um, the question then becomes, for, for those of us interested in molecular biology, the question then becomes, well, how do you go from there to something that is meaningful at the molecular biology stage? And there, I'm not sure um, how we progress as Enigma as it currently stands, but I could see ways in which we could progress in, in, different, in different facets of Enigma. For example, being able to take a very large GWAS hit and trying to figure out which gene is influencing that hit is an important question, right? Because a GWAS hit is simply a QTL. Um, similarly, um, there are smaller sets of data that are becoming available that are looking at rare variation. And, the, and being able to look at rare variation, which is the vast majority of human variation, um, and looking at its relationship with, uh, with brain-related traits is, is critically important. And while Enigma hasn't gotten into that space yet, my hope is that eventually it will. Um, I, I think at the moment it's really a cost-related issue. The, the issue that's, that's really important to think about is that Enigma has gone from a small group of individuals thinking about very specific questions, particularly this GWAS question that we started with, um, but is maturing. And what the best part about Enigma is that it's no longer asking the simple question, right? The simple question was, to find the, the most simplistic brain region you can find over large groups of people and, and compare it to genetics and come up with an answer. The genetics aspects that I find the most exciting are to me the ones that are more unusual. So um, the, the Enigma CNV analyses, for example, I really believe has the potential to show us some unique and interesting ideas. Um, particularly when you can look at deletions versus duplications and ask questions that, that, that um, look at a particular CNV and its, and its effects. Similarly, the work uh, on Enigma evolution, I believe, has the potential to show us some really interesting and, and, and kind of fascinating questions about how evolutionarily conserved variants may influence brain or how those variants that aren't conserved evolutionarily um, have influenced human-specific brain growth. Um, similarly, I think at certain points we're going to be asking questions about regulatory regions within the genome. These are all questions that I don't necessarily know if Enigma will be the first sample to try to, to work it out. But one of the groups working with Enigma might have come up with something, and then we have the potential to test it in a much larger context. And I think in that, in that way, Enigma will continue to help uh, expand and think about and really help us validate ideas that we're getting in, uh, from, from individual sites that we could never do at an individual level.
what's happened is that Enigma has proliferated into lots of different kinds of groups, lots of disease groups, lots of other kinds of question groups. Um, and what's becoming fun about Enigma is not that we're continuing to answer the, the simple question, but that more methods are being introduced, more ideas about, um, about complex genetic variation or rare genetic variation. Um, and I, I have confidence that as Enigma continues to mature, that the types of work that Enigma can do will be far better than what it has done to date. And what it's done in the last year was far better than what was done years in the, in the prior years. Um, I see Enigma kind of continuing and growing um, and becoming, uh, a, in, in increasing its ability to ask questions that we couldn't have even thought about before we started Enigma, before we, we were thinking about it in that, in that random human brain mapping meeting in San Francisco.